Kelsey the Powerfly here, and today I am bringing you guys an epic mod review, or in this case, a mod re-review. That's right, one of the mods I've reviewed before has been majorly updated, and the creator th figured that I would want to check this thing out. And the creator, of course, was right, because this is pretty darn awesome. Now, before we get started, one thing you should know is... I am currently playing like an early release version of the new update. I don't think it's been released to the public yet. Although by the time I get this up, it, maybe it will be. But I will leave you a link to an older version of the mod. And hopefully the newest version will be available for download soon. But anyway, this is the Slime Breeder Advanced Mod by Itchy Mitchy. And as you can see, we have all of our beautiful rainbow slimes right here in this pen. So that you can see just how gorgeous they really are. Now you may notice that I'm in creative mode today, and that's because these guys are ever so slightly dangerous. They're, they're not exactly the most friendly creatures in the world, and they'll, they'll eat me for breakfast if I'm not careful. So I figured I don't really feel like dying today, so we're just going to do this thing in creative. Now this right here is the recipe, and this is a recipe you're going to want to know. Because this is probably one of the most useful items that they added into this mod. And what this is is the Slime Breeding for Beginners Manual. And this will basically tell you everything that you really need to know about the mod. Most of this review is basically like a slightly more interesting summary of this book, but if you download the mod, you should have no problem getting started by reading this. And all you need to do to obtain this book is get a slime ball, a piece of paper, and a piece of leather, and throw it into your crafting table. It's a shapeless recipe, it doesn't matter how you do it, and out will pop this glorious, beautiful, and highly useful book. Now one thing you do need to know about this book is that it does not open upon right click. You must hold shift and then right click to open the book, which threw me off really badly for like 10 minutes. I thought the book was broken or something, but no, all you gotta do is hold shift and then right click it and you will have all sorts of sections here you can look at or you can just flip through it like so. And all of the other recipes are actually contained within the book, so I'm not going over them in the mod review, but you will be able to find them by obtaining this book. And believe me, you're going to need the book. There's no way you're going to remember all of this stuff without the book. And now we got some slimes over here. A nice pen of them, as you can see. Once again, they come in numerous colors. Although this one here is actually almost exactly the same color as a regular slime. But these are not, in fact, regular slimes. They are special slimes. Not only can they be different colors, but they do not actually break into little pieces like your normal slimes do. So if you kill one of these guys, it is dead forever. You do not have to worry about killing all of its little children. So in this chest are a list of the attributes that these slimes have. And one of the things that the mod update has done is it's added a whole bunch of other attributes for the slimes. So in here, first off, do note that they spawn in rain. Anytime it's raining in any biome where it rains, these guys can and will spawn. So you're going to want to watch out for that if you're playing in survival. If you don't like slimes, you might want to hide out in a desert. And also, they have varying amounts of health and varying colors. As you can see, their colors are quite different. And if I hover over them with my little damage indicator here, you can see that each one has a different amount of health. I've seen ones with as low as just three hearts. And as you can see, some of them can have three stacks of hearts. So it's, it's a pretty impressive difference. And... The other things they added are these special attributes called stickiness, acidity, activeness, rubberiness, and free-flowingness. And there's no way that I remember the descriptions for these, so what I'm going to do quickly is consult the book on slime genetics right here. Sticky, acidic, rubbery, active, and free-flowing. Sticky is basically how much they slow you when you get near them, and I'll show you that in a second. Acidic is how much they damage you. Rubbery is how hard they are to kill, so it's probably how much health they have. Active is how fast they are at breeding and eating. And free-flowing is how fast they move. Now, I did mention that they will slow you down. So if you get near one of these guys, they're going to give you this horrible, super annoying slowness effect. And I'm not sure if it affects the time that the slowness lasts or the level of the slowness, but apparently... Stickier slimes will slow you down more. Now in this chest here, we have some supplies, certain essentials, if you will, for having a nice slime farm. 
So first thing you're going to need is ridiculous amounts of raw chicken because these slimes like chicken. It's their favorite food in the entire world. They can eat this stuff all day, every day. In fact, they probably will. So if you can't remember the name of this mod, just, just call it the the chickens wish they were never born mod because if you if you install this you're probably going to be murdering chickens left right and center and they will not survive so i mean it's it's not it's not a good day for chickens this mod is the bane of all chickens but for the slimes it works out pretty good and the other essential tools recipes included in the book are the slimalizer some empty slime capsules which are needed to utilize the slimalizer and some breeding catalyst which is used to breed the slimes so the first thing I think we should look at here is the slimalizer. So basically all you do with this is you have some of these empty slime capsules in your inventory and then you simply right click a slime. Let's get this nice bright blue one and it'll take a little bit of damage and out will pop a sample of its slime. And from this you can gain a lot of cool information about it. So the first thing you can do is open your inventory Hover over this and you can see it says hold left shift for more info. So if you hold shift while hovering over it, it will tell you those five attributes of the slime that were newly added. The free flowingness, rubberiness, acidic, acidity, stickiness, and activity. It will tell you what levels they have and they range from slightly to extremely. The levels being in order from least to greatest slightly, somewhat vary, and extremely. And that will tell you the levels of those attributes that they have which will be important for some other stuff. The other thing you can do is hold shift and right click the slimalizer and this will open this color GUI. So you can put a slime sample in there and it will show you what color it is. And you could also put another item into this other slot to compare the colors. And what's really cool about these slimes is they drop a lot of different stuff. So if something is a 90% or greater match, there's a good chance that the slime will be able to drop that item. So you can get some really weird stuff coming out of these slimes as you kill them, and we will get to that very soon. Now here we have the breeding catalyst. So what this does is it makes a slime willing to breed. When they first spawn, they're not really willing to breed, so you have to give them this breeding catalyst, and then they will go and search for a mate, basically. Now I believe, according to the book, once a slime and another slime have mated and had a baby, that baby slime will automatically be able to breed, so you won't have to give the breeding catalyst to the offspring. Only the original slimes will require this. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to give some to this green slime here, and as you can see, he kind of sucks it into his body and slowly digests it. And I think I'm also going to give some to this nice aqua slime here, which will do the same. Now, when the slimes are ready to breed, they will get pink particles. And once this guy is ready to breed, they're going to find each other, and we are going to watch the process in action. Any day now, slimes. Any day now. Come on, you can do it. And there they are. Let's see, where's the new baby slime? Um, I believe it's uh, this one. So basically, when you get a baby slime, it's going to be the average of the parents. It's going to be the average of their colors the average of their health, and the average of all of their attributes. And now the other thing you're going to notice is there are now these kind of orangish beige particles coming out of the parent slimes. And that is because making a new life takes a lot of energy and they are now starving. So what you're going to want to do is give them some chicken. Because as I said before, they absolutely adore chicken. And it looks like they can hold about five items in their, uh, uh, I don't know what to call it, a digestive queue basically. And they'll eventually um, kind of slurp that all down, turn it into liquid chicken or whatever, and use it to power their uh, biological processes, whatever that involves for these guys. Now, what is kind of cool about these slimes is it's possible to domesticate them, theoretically. And I say theoretically because I haven't actually taken the time to try to do it. From what I can tell, it's a rather lengthy process. But theoretically, if you feed them enough, and give them some love. You can also right click them, which will make hearts come out and pet them. But if you pet them and feed them enough, they will theoretically become domesticated, at which point they will not intentionally harm you. Although, presumably, if you walk into them and whatnot, they can still hurt you. Now, here's the catch. 
If for some reason you forget to feed them their daily rations of like 52 chicken breasts, they're probably going to get mad at you. They, they get a little bit salty about that, and then they can become undomesticated and start attacking again. So if you're, if you're going to have these guys as pets, be warned, it's a little dangerous, and you definitely want to keep them in a good mood. And the last thing we need to look at here is this sign. This is important because there is currently no spawn egg for these slimes, so if you want to summon one in a specific place or you don't want to have it rain or whatever, you're going to need this command, slash summon space slime breeder dot entity slime 2, and that will summon in one of these slimes with random attributes. So now I believe we are going to head over to here, and this is Sam's Slime Harvest. 100% organic, no slimes were harmed in the making of these items. What's this hole? <laughs> Lies. Okay. So, yes, the slimes were harmed in the making of these items. To get these things, you have to kill the slime. So basically what, what Sam did here is he went on a slime murdering rampage and sh collected a few different things that you might be able to get from a slime. You could get lily pads, ender pearls, mossy cobblestone, packed ice, rabbit's feet, flowers, raw meat, just all sorts of really weird stuff. And, of course, slime balls upon slime balls upon slime balls. Because these guys do not just drop one slime ball. I swear I have seen them drop like 10 slime balls sometimes. They drop absolute tons of these. So if you want slime balls, you're not going to have any problem getting those whatsoever. So once again, this is where color comes in. So if hypothetically I want to check this out, I have my slime capsule here. And let's see, would it match the ender pearl? It would not match the ender pearl because it only matches 77%. So that probably would not be able to drop an ender pearl. But if you're curious whether a slime will be able to drop something, you can place the item and the slime-filled capsule inside of your slimalizer, and you can find out. And just so you know, this is not an exhaustive list of things the slimes can drop. There's probably a whole heck of a lot more of them, but I did not feel like testing for every single solitary thing that a slime could drop because I really don't have the rest of my life to do that. But this is just a sampling of the sort of things you can get from slimes. So... If you, if you can find these guys and kill them, you're, you're going to have a pretty interesting variety of stuff after a while. And now, because I never like my mod showcases to be boring, I have, uh, I've built these mini replicas of a crafting table, a chest, and an enchantment table. Which must seem kind of weird in a mod about slimes, but the point of this is these are all of the things that you will no longer need now that you have this mod, and of course that's not, it's not really true, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. The first thing we have here is slime crafting. That's right, you can have a living, breathing, squishing, squelching crafting table at your disposal. But it doesn't craft just normal things, it crafts very special, specific recipes. Now right now there's only a few recipes that can be crafted with slimes and they are found in the book, but basically this is a totally new crafting mechanism added into Minecraft, and I suspect there will probably be more recipes for this coming in the future. So if you open the book and go to Slime Crafting, the last section, you will see some recipes here. And this is what you have to give to the slime, you have to feed him this stuff, and this is what the output would be. And there are several different things, but I am going to show you what I consider to be the two most useful ones. Now the first one is really nice, it is going to take some rotting flesh, and turn it into leather. So what you do is you feed the slime some rotting flesh. It takes three rotting flesh to make one leather, so we're going to feed him three of these, and we're going to let him do his digestive thingy, and then we will unfortunately have to kill him. Okay, so now you can see the slime has yellow particles, and what that means is he has crafted a new item inside of his stomach. And unfortunately, the only way to get at this item is to kill the slime. Now, my one recommendation to the creator on this one would be to make a mechanism to remove the item from the slime without killing it so that you can potentially reuse the slime. Some sort of extraction device or something like that. And I actually did put in two sets of rotting flesh to get this out. And as you can see, he dropped five slime balls, some rotting flesh, and some leather. So this is similar to the flesh to leather mod except for it's slightly less overpowered. 
And instead of putting it in a furnace, you have to feed it to the slime. But basically, this is really useful because it takes, you know, rotten flesh, a.k.a. dog food, a.k.a. garbage, and uh, turns it into something that's actually pretty useful, particularly if you need to make a whole bunch of books. So that's a pretty awesome thing. And the other one is super cool. And what it is, is it's going to involve some diamond ore. And unfortunately, one of the slimes I had in here despawned, so I'm going to need to spawn in a new one. Let's see, will you take this diamond ore? Okay, that one doesn't eat the diamond ore. And here's, here's the issue. If you go to slime crafting, and you can see smelting the diamond ore, you have to have these minimum amounts of the attributes. And if the slime doesn't have enough of the attributes to digest something, he'll just spit it back out at you like a jerk. So let's, let's see if we can try iron. I think iron's a little bit easier on the stomach. Can you take some iron? Yes, you can. That's a good slime. So once again, we're going to wait for him to digest the iron, and then you might be surprised at just what's going to come out of this. All right, we got the gold particles, which means his the item is complete. And let's see what we get. Bunch of slime balls, and what's this? I know it looks like slime poop, but it is, in fact, slime-covered iron chunks. Now, you may be wondering... Why do I even want these? This is gross. It's just slime mucus all over my iron, and you've, you've turned it into little pieces. Why do I want that? But what's actually really cool about these is you get two of them from one piece of ore, and each one of these chunks can smelt into an iron. So you're essentially doubling the amount of iron or gold that you get. Now, you could also do this with diamond ore, but it's not really worth it, I don't think, because you have to get, you'd have to have silk touch to get the ore. And you could probably get more than two diamonds with a good fortune pick. But for gold or iron, it will essentially double your yield from your mining trip. Now, it's woefully inefficient, and I would not recommend trying to do this on a large scale unless you have absolutely no life. But if you have just a little bit of iron and you want to make it a little bit more than a little bit... Just feed it to a slime and he'll somehow violate conservation of mass and energy or something. I don't know how that works. But anyway, you'll get double the iron, which could definitely be pretty useful. So that is the crafting station done with. Next up is slime storage. And I forgot to put a sign on this. And I also forgot to put a sign on that. But that's okay, because I know what it is. This is slime storage. So in here, we uh, have no slimes because they all despawned. And that's going to be an important thing to note, particularly for this one. But what you can actually do is use slimes as your living, breathing, moving, squelching, squishing, whatever chest. The problem is they do have this really annoying tendency to despawn if you walk more than like a few blocks away from them. It's incredibly irksome. And if possible, I would recommend the creator maybe try to make, them, make their despawn range a little bit further away or make the domesticated ones unable to despawn or something. But at the moment they will despawn and if they're if you're using them as storage and they despawn with your stuff, that's going to be a bad day for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if the slime will store some garbage for us. Now granted it's not all garbage, but what you can do is certain items you can actually feed them to the slime and he'll just kind of uh, hold on to them for you. He'll keep them nice and safe inside of his body and then you can you can uh kill him to retrieve the items now for some reason this slime does not seem to be able to take these ones apparently certain pieces of armor give him really bad indigestion or something and you will notice that sometimes slimes depending on their attributes won't take certain things but for the things he does take they are stored inside of his body and they are totally retrievable by simply uh killing him which really does seem cruel. I, I, honestly, I honestly don't think you should do this. You might be getting a call from uh, PETA. But anyway, if you ever wanted to, you can use slimes to store stuff. And it's actually fairly amusing. My plan was to have some slimes in here that were pre-stuffed with like 50 diamond swords or something. But yeah, they despawn. That doesn't work out so well. So uh, cautionary tale, that one. And finally, the last thing we'll look at is what I like to call slime enchanting. It's actually called infusion, but I like to call it slime enchanting because reasons. 
So basically what this involves is you feed a slime any tool or armor, I think. I haven't actually tested on every single tool and armor. But you feed a slime the thing you want to infuse, and you also feed him one of these clear slime crystals. And then he will uh, do his uh, slime thing, whatever that is. I really don't understand how that works. Slime biology has always been a mystery to me. But he'll do his thing, and the item that comes out will be an infused item. Now the first thing you need to know is how you get these crystals. And the crafting recipe is actually as expected in the book. And it is a different slime crafting recipe. So what you need is one diamond and five glass panes, and that will give you the crystal. Now unfortunately it is a fairly demanding recipe for the slime to carry out. He needs some pretty high levels of attributes, particularly he needs to be extremely acidic. So not just any slime will be able to craft this. But if you feed this stuff to the right slime, you will be able to get these crystals. If, however, you don't feel like doing that, you will not actually be able to find the crystals in the inventory. So for some reason, they're not available in the creative inventory. So if you want to acquire one with a command, you can use slash give your name slime breeder colon clear slime crystal and that will give you what you need to have but anyway we're going to take some of these i have so much garbage in here it's ridiculous so we're going to take a few of these and let's just try a couple items i'm probably not going to do all of them i'm just going to do uh probably like these ones okay i might actually end up doing all of them i'm really curious what's going to happen if we do all of these so I'm going to just uh, get me a few slimes here, just, you know, a few. And let's see. Let's start with the Iron Axe and a Crystal. And once I kill him, we're going to get an Infused Iron Axe. And we're going to see firsthand what the difference is. And a Diamond Sword and a Crystal. And I think let's do the pants. Let's do the leather pants and a crystal. We'll try just those three. You're welcome to experiment more with this yourself. I'm not going to waste your time trying out every single item. We have lots of gold particles, so let's see what happens here. See, I'm just, you know, using a gold sword like a pro. Okay, so here is our iron axe, but it is now infused. So what I'm going to do is compare it to a normal iron axe. It does, like, no damage. But it seems to have crazy attack speed, which is kind of weird, actually. So this is the normal. See, this is the recharge on the normal Iron Axe. This is the recharge on this one. Its attack speed is crazy. So what's interesting is the infusion process does not always give you a stronger weapon, but it does give you a different weapon. And it's unclear to me whether or not it's the same every time, but I did test this once with a diamond sword, and it gave me the same thing both times. But we will, uh, we will see here. Okay, let's see. The next one that has an item is this guy, apparently. And he had the diamond sword. So this is an infused diamond sword. And this is a regular diamond sword. And for some reason, this one now gives only 6 attack damage instead of 7. What's interesting, though, is when I tested this before, it actually enchanted it with knockback at the same time. So it looks like there is some potential for variation here, and once the sword has been infused, you might end up with some, some uh, interesting enchantments on it. And I believe we have one more, some uh, leather pants. So once again, we're going to get our control pants, and we're also going to get our infused pants, and we're going to see what happens. Now see, these pants actually became colored and enchanted and apparently flammable and adhesive. I have absolutely no idea what these enchants do. So these got way better. Your normal iron pants get plus two armor. These have plus five armor toughness and plus five armor. So these leather pants actually became extremely good as well as uh, whatever flammable means. I wonder if that means maybe I take more damage from fire or uh, something, something of that nature. Let's see if there's a book for that. Oh, there is! There's a flammable enchantment book. That is crazy. Breakable 
So I'm looking at some of the other enchants. They have breakable, um, sticky. So there's actually a ton of different enchants in here, which I didn't even know about until right now. I'm just going to tell you the truth because they were not mentioned in the book. But what it looks like is flammable is probably going to be the opposite of fire protection. Breakable is probably going to be the opposite of unbreaking. So what you end up having now is some enchantments that could come from the slime infusion that are actually negative enchantments. But at the same time, the toughness on these pants skyrocketed. So, I mean, who am I to complain? But anyway, I think for the enchantments, that's something that I'm going to leave for you guys to check out. But that is a crazy new feature hidden in this mod that I completely did not know about. And I am, I'm woefully disappointed in myself. But anyway, I believe that's pretty much everything that we have. I love how it like colored the pants too. That's, that's awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment below letting me know what you thought of the mod and this video. And also, be sure to click that link down below and check out the mod for yourself. Hopefully, the version that I'm testing right now will be released to the public soon, so you can play it yourself, add it to your world, and have some fun breeding some slimes. With that being said, I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.